Yes. Yeah. Happy weekend, YouTube. Knox Nation, Renegades in the building. As you can see, we have a special Ooh. guest here, full time ninja, Bigfoot investigator, the man, the myth, the alien, Ren. Ren Gill, how are you today, sir? Hello, sir. Yeah, I am. Um... Somebody was telling me more about that. Apparently there are people who dedicate their entire lives to the mystery of hunting down Bigfoot. To finding the Squatch. Yeah, they, they find the Squatch, bro. Like that's a, that's a legit job. There are people who like mm -hmm. bang sticks together and they, they go on the radar and they follow the mm -hmm. rumors and they go Squatch hunting. There's this one guy, he's convinced that their calling card is this thing. They, apparently there's more than one of them. <laughs> I fell quite down, deep into this rabbit hole. Holy There's shit. There's more than one of them. And they communicate to each other by banding small tree trunks yeah. in half. So that's their calling card to how they communicate, how the Sasquatches communicate amongst their own. So I've got a mouthful of it. I'm going to try and swallow this and then do, carry do, on. Do you, <laughs> do you think they built the pyramids? The Sasquatches? Yeah. It would make a lot more sense than the humans. I mean, hmm. I've seen how heavy those hmm. bricks are. Yeah. Right? No machinery, dragging through the hot sun. That's what I'm saying. It would make if a lot you, more if sense to me if they were. You had a bunch of squatches doing it. Yeah. I think I think we may have just solved two mysteries in one right there, within within yeah. the first minute of a of a live stream. That's got to be a record. We're doing well so far. <laughs> I mean, there's probably like an album to promote, but fuck it. I mean, I'm I'm happy to go. I'm happy to carry on down this down this road. Man. <laughs> we can just wander and see where life takes us. Yeah, man. That's all right. We've already got a comment that says uh, Ren is eating squash. Ren is sasquatch ah we what? got we got what <laughs> what the fuck? Like, what i am eating the squatch yeah what are you what, I'm are, eating... what are you chewing on today like because as we were talking before we sasquatch. started going live like you were so you're eating sasquatch and i'm eating yeah. gummies shaped like sasquatch yeah yeah what's that do for your mind yeah anyways it's pretty, pretty good man it's pretty good it tastes um it tastes quite um it tastes what i imagine a human would taste like but slightly more tender Oh, I've had human before. Delicious rotisserie oh, yeah? style. Oh, yeah? that? <laughs> mm. <Nice. laughs> Jesus Christ. Sick Boy Album, ladies and gentlemen. Sick Boy Album has released. First off, what I want to say is... <laughs> listen, it is no easy feat to finish an album. You know, dropping a single song, doing a video... That's one beast in and of itself. But to put together an entire album is always something that should be lauded. It should be greatly celebrated. Huge pat on the back for you, sir. Well done. Appreciate that. Very well done. Getting Thank done you. an album. So my my mm. my first question I want to ask. I'm going to do this very unconventional, right? Yeah. A lot of people will talk about the process, what goes into the album. What I want to know is what was left off the album? What didn't make the cut for the album, or did did everything make it? No, not everything. There, there was a lot of songs that I was contemplating and considering, and there's a lot of songs that will probably never see the light of day. There's some songs that might surface in some sort of like B format demos, that sort of thing. But um, no, there's there's a lot. There was actually quite a lot um that didn't make it, or or there were songs that I finished about thirty, forty percent, and then I just gave up halfway through. <laughs> And I feel like for me, that's a good test. If I get bored of it yeah. halfway through, probably a sign that it's not right. You know what I mean? Like, cause, cause I feel like if I'm like super excited by it, um, there, there was a little bit of a question mark right at the end. Like Wicked Ways wasn't necessarily going to meet the album. It was going to be swapped with, uh, there was another three contenders for it that had Ooh. been finished. Interesting. Um, what, what, can I ask what, yeah. what were the other three contenders? Like, like what were, what were the finalists that just didn't make it to the ball at the end? There's one, there's one that's just like a ridiculously like fast rap sort of thing. It's just kind of me flexing off that kind of fast rap sort of side of things. Um, then there, uh, what was that one called? Oh, called Crash Landed. There was one called Castles Made of Sand. Um, and then there was there was a couple of other ones as well. They were all they were all very like hip hop rooted and hip hop based. But um. Yeah, man. No, in, in the end, like I just listened to the flow of the record. Mm. Seven Sins, I didn't actually write until... It was funny, with, with Seven Sins, right? Like 
I wanted to create this epic orchestral intro for the art. I just wanted to have like this epic start. And that was only intentionally meant to be about a minute and a half long. And then I started producing it and I put, started putting together this choir and these violins and stuff. And by the time I was into it, I was like, I just kept writing more and more and more. And then I threw in the drill switch up and then, so it just, it just kept growing. Um, so yeah, yeah. The, the album was always meant to be like 14 tracks and then it just grew, oh, got you, carried you, away. You blew was, past that, my friend. Yeah, man. But yeah. like, I, I don't know, you know, you talk about sort of conception of an album and, and what goes into it. Um, in terms of how this album started laying out, was it just, you're making music, you're making singles, you're just doing what you enjoy, and then things are just kind of starting to come together. And then you start to kind of place them into an album, or did you set out and kind of methodically go, right, it's going in this direction, now I need a song that sounds like this. Do I have one that sounds like this? No, I got to go make one now. So we got to kind of fit in this puzzle piece and this puzzle piece. Like, what was what was kind of the, the process of putting this album At the together? very start... I yeah, at the very start, I knew I wanted to do like a project that I was putting together. The very, I mean, I had a few songs from a long time ago, like The Hunger um, and, and What You Want, which were like songs that I'd written probably back in 2015 or 16. It was like really old songs, but I just never knew what to do with them. They never really had their place. And then um, I wrote Genesis. And then after writing Genesis, this was like during one of the lockdowns. It had like this feeling about it that I was like, oh, this is a really cool feeling. I'd love to like kind of like, start creating things around this feeling right and um and then and then well, i went it, through this really isn't it fitting that uh track titled genesis is the uh the beginning of, yeah. of this album journey go on go on yeah man no it's, it's funny and and then um and then i went through a really like very frustrating situation in the music industry uh, you know and, and i ended up separating from everything hmm. that I was in and just being like totally independent like to no manager no distribute or nothing just i was just totally independent i had to try and find it that and that's how me and connor started working together actually back then because i was like looking for uh, a distributor to distribute the music and i knew connor through um through sam Tompkins, and um you know we'd always bump into each other and get on really well but we never like properly hung out and then and then we connected and met up and we just got on really really well man we got on really really well and um oh, yeah. and, shout, and out to was, shout out to connor connor yeah connor's right a now. dude man anyone connor's who knows a man connor is a legend he, yeah, he's a, he's a G man. He works really hard, yeah. and um, and, and and then we started um. After that, we started putting out we like Genesis and Sick Boy and, and and stuff like that, and um, yeah, the album. It was around that sort of time. I was like, you know what? I, because I was so fed up with the with the industry and stuff. I was just like, I just want to start making music for the love of making music. Mm -hmm. I don't want to think about this as like. Where is this all going to fall placed strategically? I didn't want to think about marketing. I didn't want to think about anything. I just wanted to make this record. And then and then that's what I did. And I was planning to go to Canada. And it kept getting delays because the Canadian border at the time was shut. So my, my health journey into trying to get my health back kept being delayed. And and then I wrote that I wrote that song, Higher End, um, at the end of what? last Sorry, year. What, what was that song called? <laughs> that's how I ran, yeah. Never heard that, of it. Is, Never heard of it. No, it's, it's one of the lesser known tracks. Yeah. And then um and then that just that just brought so much attention onto what I was doing mm. to the point where this album that I'd created, which was Sick Boy, which I'd always kind of just created as a bit of a me project, as a bit of a self indulgent, like I just want to make a hip hop record because I love hip hop. Um, it ended up becoming a lot bigger and in, than it was intended in terms of how many eyes were on it, and I was like, damn. I might start to start having to think about this a bit more <laughs> serious yeah. with how many people are kind of watching and talking about it now. So, so I um we poured a lot more into into the promotion of the album. We poured a lot more into spacing it out, into the music videos, which luckily had been done before before I was already in Canada. And then there was all this pressure on me because I was like, fuck, you know, like I'd written the whole album before High Ren, and at the time that I was releasing the album because I hadn't poured so much of myself into the album, because it was always meant a bit, of, a bit of fun. I was like, fuck, like people are coming off the back of this, this thing that I wrote that I'm really proud of. And I don't feel like the writing on this album is quite up to scratch. So I went to the drawing board and that's when I wrote money game three. Cause oh. I was like, I want to show people, I want to show people that this, this wasn't a fluke. Yeah. That it's, you know, I want to show people that I, if I pour myself into something, I can write consistently with this quality. So that's what I did. I, I, I just really like hit the drawing board and we conceptualized Money Game and how it would work. And I was like, I really want to take this to a new level. So we got obviously like the uh, classical 
pianist on board. We got the string section on board and yeah, just created something that was really pushing the boundaries of what me and Sam were doing um, visually and sonically as well. Yeah. What's interesting too is, you know, like you alluded to that lesser known song, High Ren kind of really kickstarted all of this, but this album here, High Ren is not on this album. No. Why is High Ren not on this album? It's just a different feeling. It's a different yeah. feeling. High Ren, I, I see like, I see that High Ren is, um, sorry, I see High Ren is a bit of a standalone piece, mm -hmm. to be honest. Um, it it kind of felt like maybe it would have been a wise marketing move to put it on the album. But for me, it was, it was never really about that. It was never really about selling more copies. It's about what it is and, and what that album when, contained. When have you ever done anything for a marketing move? I think you always just yeah. kind of do, do what you love to create and enjoy and then just release it. Just yeah, it yeah. And, 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 you know, and, and elements of that can fall into promotion, but as long as you yeah. make it intertwine it in such a way that feels exciting for me, like what we did with all these riddles and what we did with the live stream there. Um, that was really exciting for me. And it was very unconventional. Like it's, it's not really what a marketing team would bring to you if you were to come up with something. So yeah, hey yeah guys, that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this massive game that I'm going to just like leave little Easter eggs throughout social media, live streams everywhere. Yeah. That's, that's going to go down really well in a boardroom. But you don't want to like sit down and do a bunch of like radio interviews and pump stuff up and, and promote it the traditional way. No, fuck that. Then I'm going to do a live stream no. and have, have uh, someone bite into an apple and go bite me and then just like really knock people aside with a whole dive into religion and metaphysical properties and life and the mm. world systems upon which we build ourselves. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks for that. That was fun. That was, that, that was a fun journey. Yeah. There became a point where the lines got blurred, yeah, and I even forgot that I was releasing an album when I was deep into that because I was so, I was so, oh, my shit. mind was in this like riddle making mode, and yeah. and and I knew what was coming, so I was so excited that everybody was like, and the funny thing was like a lot of my audience were like, a lot of my audience didn't get it, and I had comments like, "Ren, this is so not you giving away money, making people like scramble to win, like this is so unnew," and a lot of people just didn't, and I loved that because it was like. And, and I'm sure some people just dropped off and I got a lot of comments being like, mate, you're selling out, you're doing all these promotional things. And I was like, so it was funny because it was like, it was having the opposite effect in the short term of what a good marketing campaign should have because there was a lot of people just didn't fucking get it. But the people who did get it really got it and they were all working together to decipher all these things. It was kind of based on Cicada 3300, which I'm not sure if you heard out. Yeah. But it was this legendary online treasure hunt that used a lot of decoding and stuff. And we got Jake on board, which was one of my oh, mates who's like yeah, a, was... this legend, genius computer coder. And he was helping me program these riddles and stuff. And I just don't think it could have gotten any better for me in terms of, and I liked that a lot of people didn't get it, that uncomfortable feeling. And even when we, when we had the people burning that suitcase full of money, it was very polarizing. And some people were like, why the fuck would you do this? And some people were like, this is brilliant. I'm so glad that this is happening. So you had this big polarization. And I think that's, I, I loved it because it created a conversation. And I, and I think that's what good stuff does is it creates a conversation separate from me. Fuck me. Like me and my music is almost like it, it, it's, it's the vessel. And then it's the conversations surrounding that. I don't want the accolades. I don't need to be told that it was genius. I don't need any of that. I, I want to remove myself from it. If those seeds of conversation are being had, yeah. which then leads to positive change, then, that's, then I've achieved everything, everything that I wanted from that. Yeah. I mean, do you feel in terms of album rollout now, like... Did, did this go how you envisioned it? Is, is this everything you wanted to achieve, I guess, and, and unlock and, and take your followers on the, the journey that you took them on? I, I hope so. I feel like I feel like the creator's curse is we're eternally d dissatisfied and, and, and wanting to be, do the next thing. Yeah. So once it's done, my brain is then next on to challenge. the next thing. Straight yeah. away. It's the next Always. thing straight away. Um, I'm going to try as best as I can just to kind of like chill and just like soak it all in and enjoy it because it's been a long time coming up to leading can, up to this album release. Can, can you do so, me a favor? Um, can you do me a favor? Yeah. Because we've, we've known each other for a little while now. We've known each other for a little while yeah. now. So enjoy this, please. Enjoy it. Take time yeah. to celebrate it. I know, I, know, I know Sam's coming over. I know you guys are going to celebrate. Enjoy it. Yeah. Enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I'm, I'm gonna try my best. I know. Man. I, I know. You're, I, I know. You're already ready it. for the next challenge. You're always grinding. <laughs> your mind is turning. You're already planning out the next project and the one beyond that, and probably even the one beyond that. But enjoy <laughs> these moments, man. An album release yeah, only I'm, comes I'm every once in a while. Like it is. It is I'm, really something to be treasured, my friend. I'm gonna try my best. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. Listen, uh, one big question that keeps coming in, so I'll, I'll ask it while we were talking about, you know, riddles and leading into things. People want to know, yeah. is Money Game 3 the end? Is that the end of the Money Game series? Yeah. So so in terms of a trilogy, there are certain things for me. Um, uh, Jenny's Tale, Violet's Tale, and Screech's Tale was a trilogy. And Money Game, Money Game is a trilogy. Um uh, that doesn't necessarily it will mean the end of me talking about similar themes and stuff in songs to come, but I, I really like threes. I, I really like things coming in threes, mm. and um, it feels like it feels like a bit of an open-ended ending, the end of Jimmy's story, and 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 how that climaxes. So um, yeah, I, I think I think it is the end of the Money Game trilogy. Um, you know, never say never, but I. I if I start something else, it'll probably be a new concept from scratch because I think we really pushed that to quite an extreme place with what we did with the rain machine, with the inside, with the choreography, with everything. That um, I feel like if I came to the same concept again, yeah, I, it might end up feeling a bit of a stale challenge for me to try and level up it once more. I think I'd be more excited coming up with a completely new concept from ground zero. Another question relating to Money Game, because I see there's a there's a couple sort of Easter egg questions, so I'll I'll get them out now. Playing off of the 45, you and I talked about this. I, I love when you got to that part. I mean, listen, for those who saw the clip on social, like, I get there, I meet Ren, and then he literally just launches into the full rap. Like, I don't, it, and it was a faster version. It was a faster tempoed version than how you walked through. I don't know when you breathe, but he already had everything just down pack. And I was floored with, with that performance. But I love the, uh, you know, the Colt Fort 5. He reaches the age of 45. But there were some people who were just wondering if there's further symbolism on the 45 and the 45th president of the United States with the red tie with Donald Trump. Is there any <laughs> alliteration to that there? Or is that is that just reaching too far into the uh, symbolic no, this, bank. This, this, this wasn't Donald's story. Um, it, it, the, the, no, the the, four, the 45 was simply, um, I don't know if anybody else caught it, but in every five year segment, it would reference his dad. So every five yeah. years, if, if you go back and watch it, it's five, 10, 15, 20. Every five years, it would reference his dad and it would come back to him in 45. Um, yeah, like, like I say, it was the, it was the Colt 45 pistol, which is quite a symbolic it's quite a, you know, it's like the all-American powerhouse yeah. pistol. You know what I mean? So, like, it kind of symbolized, it, it linked with Jimmy's story quite well. And I was very determined. It's really hard thing to do, A, to get any sort of replica pistol in the UK, let alone a replica Colt 45 with, with the right bullets. Because I was, like, adamant that they had to be .45 caliber bullets because otherwise... You know, it had it had to be, they had to be. There's, so there, there's um, going to be like a breakdown channel out there. Somebody who does it, who's going to like pause it and look at that and go, "That's not a fucking four or five bullet." Exactly. Right there. That, exactly. That, that, one, you know I don't, I don't know on. who does that out there, but there's people who do that. Oh, there's yeah, the, and these people are the bane of my existence. But I, I, so I had to um, I had to really focus on the attention to detail there. But Connor, like, shout out to Connor again. Did a lot of running around. Dude, Con Connor was running around like a madman on, on shoot day. Like he was just, yeah. anytime something was forgotten or needed or needed a bandaid over it, Connor, Connor was he's there. A, he's a good lad, man. And, but he, um, he, he somehow managed to track down a guy <laughs> who was selling these replica Colt pistols. We had to get a license for it. And then, um, yeah. So, so, so we had this, he, he came to me the day before the shoot and he was like, here's your gun, Ren. So we did it. <laughs> that's a that's a quote to hear every single day. Here's your gun, Ren. You know what to do with it. Yeah. Listen, oh, mate, go on, go was, on. Wait, sorry. There, there was such a sketchy moment. After the shoot, me and Connor had to run a lot of props back. I don't know if you saw his van. It's this like tinted black window van. Yeah, it's one of those where right? like you, you pass candy out for the little kids on the side of the curb. And you, yeah, one of those Yeah, vans. it's a candy van. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Take that. What take from that? What you will about Connor, but um, <laughs> it, it, we had these uh, 
We have the pistols in the van, these replica pistols. We have the fake cocaine in the van. And we have the fake money in the van. Yeah. <laughs> so if we if we had been pulled over by policemen, that wouldn't have been a pretty that wouldn't have been a pretty that, thing trying to explain. That would have been an interesting uh, conversation to have. Uh, stay listen. Staying on the theme of money game because again, like it's just dropped. I know so much went into this. I, I know how excited you were on shoot day. There was there was yeah. st- I think everyone was excited. There were definitely nerves too. Cause I think everybody realized how big this was and, and how well it was going to do. And I know it's, it's trending right now. It's definitely going to get a million views. It's going to keep going from there. It's going to do really, really well. But in terms of coming up with this concept, right? I felt like the other, like money game two is more, you really kind of in a rap bag. You've got sort of a, a catchy hook there. Like this is more, I guess, taking, I guess the money game rap elements, but combining them with, more of the storytelling and visual performance side of like the high rends and the screeches and Jenny's tale, you know, bringing those worlds together. So my question to you is the roots of creating this was the story in your head first and you knew where you wanted to go. And then you started like, just like laying out the lyrics and then you kind of found the sounds afterwards or, or what, what was the creative process for money game three? Cause this is a, a different sort of conceptualization compared to some of the other tracks on this album. Yeah, so it's funny. So it was about about f- six years ago. I'd written this song called Dreams, and it was the it was the story of this guy's life from start to finish, really quickly. But yeah. it was a very different story. But it was year by year of this guy's life, and he gets this he gets this he gets the tumor actually. This guy and 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 he was um he um he becomes an addict, and it's, it was a very different story. And it wasn't even necessarily linked to the pursuit of wealth. It was just a very different story. But I really like this concept of breaking down a character's life from age by that song. I never did anything with that song. So I, when it came to me being like, right, I want to write something for the album. There's some, um, you know, that's uh, more in a level with higher end, more in a level with the tales. I just kind of sat, I, I sat down and then, and then this idea came in my head. And I also had this thing looming over me of like, Money Game 2, that second verse was one of my favorite verses I've ever written. And oh, I loved it. I had to, yeah. I had to find a way to surpass that. Um, so there was a lot of expectation because Money Game 2 was such a strong concept. So, that I, so I sat with it and then that came into my mind. I was like, oh, fuck, what if I just do this? And, and, then, and then this story of this Jimmy character, I'm not sure exactly how it happened, but some of it was I, I was hanging out with Jake a lot of the time. Um, and, and Jake's this computer coach programmer and i was right i wrote a lot of it just on my phone while i was sat i was sat in his living room this is uh, this is um the, the start of the concept i was sat in his living room right before i went to canada actually no maybe it was one of the times i visited i can't remember but i was sat in his living room and i was just like typing it away on my phone and, and because jake's like had this past with computer programming and, and and a bit of a shady past within computer stuff uh i i had this thing of like a, a teenage fucking genius who, who does uh, computer programming. So that kind of leaked into my mind just simply by hanging out there. So it was loosely based a little bit off some shit that he told me that he got up to when he was a teen. And then um, and then it just grew from there and the story elaborated. And, you know, I love movies like Breaking Bad. I love movies like Scarface. And I'd never mm. really seen those stories brought to music and told in music like this 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 journey from innocence to pure corruption. And, and um, to the point where the main character is a bit of a dickhead, but you still empathize with him because you, you, you see their journey and you see what X, Y, Z happened to take them to the places that they were. So even though that they're a bit of an arsehole, by the end, you're still empathizing with them in, mm. in a way. And you still don't want Jimmy to die when he's got this, this pistol. I remember looking at the live chat and everyone was like, no, don't do it. Like, so you're still, you still, want, you're still rooting for this character, even though he's a pretty shady, dodgy character. So... That's what, and it's the same with Scarface, mate. Mm. And it's the same with, um, it's same with Walter White at the end of Bre- Breaking Bad. He's such a dickhead, but you're still like, you're still rooting for the anti-hero because you've seen their journey. You know what I mean? Yeah, I love, I love how you play on this concept of the, the anti-hero, and you mm. know, I, I feel like you, you talk about having winning concepts that people can connect to. You know, winning personality traits versus maybe some negative personality traits. Being a dick sometimes. I, th- I feel like on this Sick Boy album. Uh, sometimes we get a very profound Ren. You get a very thought-provoking Ren. Other times you get a, a very tongue-in-cheek Ren who's just having fun. And, and sometimes you get a dick Ren. Mm. So I feel like this album is kind of a, a full just reflection of 
various moods and and you know i i think we're all human right there's light and dark within us all nobody's simply black and white and i think you do a really good job of just kind of opening yourself up on this album kind of taking us through your your highs and your lows maybe some of your your more fun laid back moments and some of your deeper more serious moments too throughout this i mean was that kind of your intention subconsciously going into that or or what i think it's just i think it's just like shamelessly expressing all parts of myself i mean because like humans like we we like to have a very set in stone projection of what we think who we think we are the characters that we think that we yeah. are and we put that out to the world and we pride ourselves on it and if anything kind of like goes against that we might feel like discomfort or if we come across in a way that is misinterpreted but i think i think the thing is is like we're so like multifaceted and so so that you can be quite prof you know because i'm sure that some people will hear like a message um like high ren and then come and listen to a song like Masochist and feel a real like jolt, uncomfortable, like how make these two things yeah. messages make sense. There was there was a other. lot of people uncomfortable with Masochist, I feel like. And I saw mm. I think I think you even shared my my breakdown of of that one when I when I listened to it. I'm like, wow. First off, it, you must have been at a low point because it just felt like someone who was just really fed up and was just kind of, you yeah. know what, I'm going to just burn all of it down and just have mm. a cleansing kind of myself of everything I see around me, everything that's influencing me. And then we're going to rebuild from there yeah. and, and kind of build but, back but, up. But this, this is, this is the, and this is the funny thing about how people take characters. It's like, it's mm. like, it's like I can be a thousand. So because I'm, because I was angry in that moment and I wrote that song out of an angry place, everything I said in that song for that moment and snapshot in time was very real for me. And it did represent mm. how I felt. Yeah. So it's like, but, but that might not necessarily represent how I feel in a year's time. No. But non nonetheless, it still it still was a real moment, and it's like pe people. I think people have a hard time accepting that we c human beings. I think by nature are all well, all of us are hypocrites. All of us are contradictory. We're, we're even emotionally we complex. We we are. Well, yeah, it's, no, it's no. really difficult in the world that we've invented to not be self contradictory. And yeah, I I like that, and I I, I like. I don't know if this is slightly masochistic of me, but I like it when I re release something that doesn't necessarily have an overwhelmingly positive response either. Mm. And I, I find it really interesting and I, I get very curious about doing things like that, that, that may be quite polarizing or maybe people are so extreme that they're like, I'm off this train, man. I, I like following you, but sayonara, mate, this isn't for me. I don't want to, I don't want to listen to but what you're doing anymore. And, and, I think that's fine, man. I, I, I like to observe all these things and stay eternally curious about them. But it doesn't necessarily mean I'm ever going to stop um, speaking my truth in that moment. Or, or even if I have something that I make and go, damn, this might like alienate some of my audience and lose me some followers. I think if it's still like, if it still resonates with me at the time, I'm just going to put it out there. Absolutely. At the end of the day. I, I think yeah. the, the, the beauty of art, and I think you're in an even rarer position being an independent artist versus an artist who has to go through different hoops and approval processes is that you can be a true artist to yourself and not have a filter on your music. And th that's why music is there and art is there. Like sometimes we may express things that we don't necessarily understand about ourselves yet that we're still dealing with some of the darker stuff. But since we have this outlet to deal with this darker stuff, that's how we process it. That's how we ultimately get through it. But then people hear the darkness and they're like, oh, holy shit. Like this is this is too twisted for me. This is not the person that I expect. And they think that that yeah. song like defines our entire lives or our entire characters or beings. But they don't realize like this is our way of coping. This is our way of expression. Like, uh, you know, it's, I, I think sometimes people I, I, have to realize there's a separation of, of music and, and real life too yeah, at the same and, time. And, and it's funny because a lot of people who were drawing the comparison to the hopeful message of High Ren, the hopeful message of High Ren was really rooted in the fact that we all have this duality within us and to accept it. It wasn't actually the triumph over light of evil, which is a lot of people took it hmm. as the triumph of good over evil. It was actually... For me, what that song was when I was creating it was more the acceptance that both good and evil will always coexist within ourselves, within the world around us. And this dark and light, the shadow, the light, there will always be an eternal thing. And they'll always, it was like I said, with this internal da eternal dance, it, it will always be like it is because without, without the darkness, it's, the, the light's only apparent in, in a place of dark. The, That's true. It needs the dark. To, to, to exist and, and vice versa a shadow needs light 
to be able to actually exist. So I think I think it, there's it, beauty in that. There's there's absolutely too, beauty in that. Me, me too. So so a lot of people took that as a, as a triumph over good of evil, which is a lot of what all of our stories, all of our movies, and a lot, a lot of it is based on this narrative. Uh, and I, I don't know, for me, that, that narrative is a little bit of a fallacy um, because th there are shades of, of both within both. Uh, Lucifer was an angel. God was quite wrathful, you know, mm. like it, 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 there, there, are, there are speckles of both within both things. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, I think honestly, one of the beauties of art is that it's not always meant to be fully understood right away. And, and mm. sometimes, too, in terms of, of creation, we might make a piece and we might not fully understand it yet ourselves. Like it, it takes us time to, to process and appreciate what we've composed and, and what we've created and, and put out there. And again, I think, I think this duality of, of light and dark, and you put it so beautifully, like you, you can't appreciate the light until you've walked in darkness, right? Because if you always have light, you'll never know the other side of it. And then as humans, we tend to take things for granted. But there is definitely beauty in that dance and that eternal struggle of conflict and uh may i don't know maybe maybe you're a bit of an idealist though in in this world of uh of bitter realists but you know you really seem to somehow find a way to find beauty even in the worst moments and and, and even in that that conflict I, I think i think the world needs a lot because because when people say realists or people say optimists or or um i mean i mean the world needs people who a realist would consider a, a, um, someone who's being unrealistic in terms of their hopes for a more a leaning towards a more utopian future. Um, I think the world needs it because because without people like that, it would never it would never the needle would never be pushed in that direction. And and, and what I hope to do is try and inspire people to become and, and and dare to think that that we can aim for better without this this concept of realist being like okay well it's just the way the world is you know so the best thing to do is just get on with it and and, and, and not be so affected by it because it's just human nature to be this way but um i, I kind of refuse to accept that to be honest I, I, I and i feel like the more people that there are that do refuse to accept it the more the more chance that we have of creating a, a collectively better experience life experience for all of us because i i do firmly believe that an entry point on base levels we can we can sort out housing healthcare and food as a basic ground level you know it may we may still exist within a competitive capitalist system and that's fine as long as that under infrastructure is taken care of and we're and we're um and we're looking after the people who have a really hard time because right now it's going in the opposite direction like yeah. homelessness back where you are back in my home country of the UK is shooting up the price of everything is shooting up. People are suffering, um, and and I, it looks like it's only going to get worse in, in in the short term. So it's it's like, it, it it's these infrastructures and systems that we have built that have led to that, and and it's and it's the decisions of the greedy that have trickled down to affect a lot of the working class and middle class who are pointing the fingers at each other when mm. it's when, when there's a different adversary. So, yeah. Um, sorry, I've gone on a little bit of a tangent no, away from the album. No, we're, we're, think, listen, we, we are here for tangents. Yeah, I, I think it's super important that we have more people trying to push the needle the other way, even if it seems unrealistic. So it falls somewhere in the middle, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've always said, and, and you do this, you have plenty of tracks where there's social commentary, there's there's societal critique going on, There's there's a look at our system under which we operate. And there's a lot of questions that are asked, but for me, it's, it's easy to critique, right? It, it's easy to criticize. It's easy to point out flaws and to sit back and to be a spectator. The step that goes further is to then identify a problem and try to think through solutions. And then an even further step is to have the courage to try to propose some of those solutions and to try to be yeah. an activist for change and to try to do yeah. something about it. And I, I think you represent that process coming around full circle. Because I think while you do critique throughout your music and you have plenty of songs that do, there's also a lot of messages of, well, this is how I think things could be. And this is what I think we could do and how we could come together. And we need to start thinking more about the community and less just about individual needs and juxtapositioning the individual above everyone else. 
So the the whole point, the whole point of this, the the promotion of of, of Sick Boy with with all these riddles and stuff like that. The whole point of that challenge, it was it was a bit of a uh, an oxymoron because there was a prize of money at the end of it. The whole point mm. of that thing, right from the start, was making people work together using collective intelligence to solve problems, right? Because the whole point of that was to get, and, and tens of thousands of people were doing that, and they were solving these impossible riddles that Jake and myself were coming up with. That, you know, we, we, we put months of work into so it. Dope. Yeah, and people were, people were solving these um, really effectively within short frames of time because of using thousands of people working together. And right at the end, and, and this is what I really hope this message isn't lost on people uh, from the experience uh, who don't just think it was a challenge to win money because it was never about the money. The, the, the only reason that I started giving away money because I didn't want to seem hypocritical that I was creating a money game and not giving away mm. my own money because for me on the surface that would have made me feel quite greedy like I'm not even willing to give away the thing that I'm criticizing so I gave away my money and and we had this challenge and and by the end of it it was like the point that I really wanted to make was look here's 10,000 people solving these riddles for fun imagine if you were self motivated to have 10,000 people 100,000 people a million people sitting together to collaborate to work out a more efficient system, a, a more efficient economy that doesn't let people fall through the cracks, a more effective healthcare system that doesn't let people fall through the cracks on a global scale, because what the internet has done is it afforded us an ability to shrink the world in, in such a way that I think four year electro, electoral process is fucking outdated. Re electoring, electing a representative that the countries split down the middle on, outdated. All of these systems that we've created made a lot of sense when the postal vote was the main way that we communicate, right? Where the mm. ballots, uh, ballots were the main way that we collect data and votes. Right now, we, we have a tool that connects all the greatest minds of our time to work out sol solutions. All democracy, all government really is, is a body of people making decisions for the better of everybody else. And it should represent everybody else rather than control everybody else. Well, government as, we right as now, consent by the governed. Exactly. And we have a tool right now which, which can unify the globe to bring together the best minds for that specific need and we can utilize tools like liquid democracy on a global scale where we're where we're electoring like smaller representatives where our decisions trickle down there are things that we can do much more effectively using collective intelligence that render these old systems hmm. dinosaurs it makes them it makes them obsolete because it's a better idea except we haven't really utilized the internet to its fullest potential in my personal do, opinion do. so what what i was really trying to do was in was inspire the, the realization that, fuck, if we work together, we're very effective. Even if I'm sat in here and I feel dumb as shit because I can't work out Jake's coding riddle, when he was telling me what he was doing, it's going over my head. So, like, there were a lot of people that were like, ah, oh, I feel like I want to get involved, but it's just going over my head. The people who felt like that but went along with it anyway, what I really hope that they learned from it was, I, I'm not capable of this, but there's 50 people in this group of 1,000 who mm. are, and they're helping it, and I'm just... I might notice something that these people didn't about that wasn't coding related that was kind of on the surface. And it's like all of these brains coming together, it's utilizing various different strengths from yeah. each person. And, and everybody is vital in that. Even the people who feel incapable, they're vital in that. And that's what I really wanted to show is just like democracy doesn't necessarily have to mean choosing someone who we think is capable of making all these decisions, it can mean an actively participating process where we all figure out the best way. Because I think by nature, all humans have a degree of empathy, which means that we don't want to see our fellow man or woman suffering. I think sometimes fear gets in the way of that empathy, which then turns into hatred, which is expressed outwards, which can manifest itself in racism, which can manifest itself in... Um, in sexism, in, in, in lots of different things. But I think that's a fear. It's a fear-driven response. It's not a genuine hatred. Mm. And that fear is getting in the way of empathy. And I think that I think that there's a much better way that we can s ensure the survival and betterment of our species by using collective intelligence that hasn't quite been tapped into yet. So my, wait, wait. my answer... One, one second. Sorry. Let me Let me ask you a quick question, piggybacking off of that, talking yeah. about, you know our democratic systems being outdated do you think nationalism is outdated i mean you touched a little bit on the concept of of borders are a human construct and a societal construct that essentially just sets us up for conflict and competition and from what i glean from you in, in terms of you know trying to bring together people regardless of 
geographic range, regardless of economic outcome. I mean, how do do you think that we currently live in a in a world structure and system that is outdated, according to how it's all set up beyond just simple democracy for a singular government? Mm. So I think I think there's a I think there's positive and negative sides to nationalism. Hmm. I think I think there's there's a pride that can be quite positive and celebrating your culture, celebrating your heritage, celebrating your roots. You know, like I don't necessarily think that even like America being like we're the greatest goddamn country on earth. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. America, you know, like, as long fuck as- yeah. No, you know, I mean, and, and, you know, I grew up in Wales. There's a lot of Welsh pride in Wales about about all the old traditions, about all the old. Uh, yeah. I, so I yeah, think there is. There's, there's, there's kind- a lot of cultural pride. But I think I think there's having a pride for, for your roots and for your heritage and your culture versus then leveraging that pride into something this is, more physical. This is what I mean. So this, this is what I mean. It's, it's when that pride starts becoming a hierarchy in, in and, and, and creating a situation where you then look down your nose at anybody that doesn't necessarily fit into your in, into that pride, you know, like in, in, so like you're from this place, I'm from this place, you're my enemy because you simply were born in this place. You were maybe born with this skin pigmentation. You were born. That means that you are not involved in my sphere of pride. That's when I think that it's it's uh, stupid. I think it's fucking stupid. Um, but. I think I think that what you were saying, I think it would take a lot of work. I don't think it's as simple as being like... No, it never is. Just, it it never know what I mean? is. Like, let, we're just going to have this global system of democracy where we all make decisions. Um, I, you know, to a degree that always, that slightly exists within corporatism because there are corporations that are, are global corporations and a lot of the, the decisions that they make trickle down to global government systems, right? And that can either be positive or negative. Sometimes it's quite negative. Um, sometimes yeah, well, it's because you have but, you have the gears of profit driving that, and that's the decision making process, which isn't necessarily is this best for the people or for you know the and, general and, public, which and, is and when, which is the when, idea of government, hopefully. And, and when profit is the main incentive, it can pollute mo- morality, um, which is kind of what I was coming mm. back to in Money Game Three. So, so when when profit is over uh, is over social good in terms of uh, importance in decision making for corporations then it's very easy to go, let's cut these corners by doing X, Y, Z, which leads to either, you know, like mass deforestation in, in an area that should be protected or it leads to uh, child labor or, you know, there, there, there's so many things. Uh, so much suffering is inflicted by making profit the overarching imp- uh, level of importance in, mm. in decisions within major corporations. So what I would like to see is a, is a shift though. So the profit can, you know, you can still value profit, but social good top trumps that. So you always have to ask, okay, how can we create profit in such a way that doesn't, doesn't interfere with the, the social good or, or, or the or ground level good for basic human rights, you know? Yeah. So, yeah because um, obviously there's, like you said, I think there's a, there's a balance much in the same way as we talked about the self exploration of light and darkness there's there's good and bad there's there's this dance and and where profit can be good is this creation of competition because competition can drive ideas it can drive innovation right and it can help us progress a hell of a lot faster with that competition and innovation than government bureaucracy can when things are all controlled and all state regulated as as we have seen in various industries so it's it, it you're right i think i think it's it's being more mindful with how we balance that out though yeah, and, and I think also as well, the message that I was trying to convey is I don't have the answer because a lot of people are like, okay, cool, right? We know that someone's wrong. Yeah. What do we do now? Like you said, and, one, and, and one man what, doesn't what have the answer. It's it's a collaborative effort. That's what that's what that's, you're getting at, isn't it? It's it's about all of us pulling our resources my, together. My, an- my answer is it's us. It, that's, that's my answer. Mm. When people are like, right, well, the system's fucked. What do we do about it? I'm like, yeah, what do we do about it, mate? Let's, you know, the, the answer is collectively, it is there, but we all have to want it enough. For it to ch- for anything to change, but if we do want it enough, it will change. It's inevitable. It has to. Um, yeah. So listen, yeah. bring bringing this back around full circle now, right? What's Let's do that. What, Let's what's just, yeah. what, what's interesting is that how how passionate you are in terms of how much you really do care about our futures, essentially. And it's not just about your futures; it's about all of our collective futures. Because you wouldn't make such music, you wouldn't be so passionate speaking on this, and let us go off into these these tangents. 
But what I find very interesting, you know, being on the sideline to this is that you are someone who life has really kicked the shit out of. I mean, you've, you've, you've had some dark times, man. And there's plenty of people who have gone through that darkness and that part of their journey and going, you know what? Fuck the world. Fuck all this. It's a full on devil may care attitude from there. And I think your, your music could have fully reflected that. And yet you still sit here and you've, you've found a way to take a negative and, and really strengthen you with it and, and kind of turn it outward. So I, I guess the question that I'm getting to is after, after releasing this album, after kind of watching this journey so far, and, and now you have great success, now things are coming around. How are you doing? How are you? I think, I think that's the, that's the part I struggle with is, is looking after myself with it within, within this kind of like, uh, you know, outward want for a better life for everybody. Um, yeah, I'm maybe, I'm maybe not as good as looking after myself. That's, that's something I still need to work on, I think. Hmm. Because cause that like devil may care, fuck everything attitude, I sometimes take that with my personal behaviors, not in terms of what I'm doing artistically or what I'm trying to push for, for everybody, but in terms of myself, you know, like before I came to Canada, I was like probably an 80 to 100 cigarette smoker a day. Uh, which which is a stupid thing to do when you when you're littered with health problems and the only reason I'm not doing that is because I'm in another country right now treating my health and and you know I, I'm gonna try my best not to go back to that but I think I think I'm 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 a little bit self-destructive within myself still it's still something I need to master um, I'm not sure why that is I, I, I it's probably because when I was thinking about it there's something. There's something that makes you feel like you have a level of control when you're consciously deciding to self-destruct because mm. there's so there's so much around me with my health that is out of my control like my symptoms one day i can just wake up and have horrible symptoms mm. and i could have been doing everything right and looking after myself it's the nature of autoimmunity so when i do something that harms myself that's within my conscious control it gives me a sense of control and which is weird, and it, it, it's not. This is nothing that I want anyone to be influenced by, but I'm just trying to be as honest as possible. Um, so, so I think I need to get better at getting to a state of balance and, and, and looking after myself as much as I look after my music. Yeah, absolutely, man. Listen, like you said, we don't have all the right answers, and we sure as hell don't have it for ourselves. You know, it, learning to take care of ourselves and self-love is a lifelong journey. And we don't get it right at every single point, And we're not always fully in control of, of what's going on with ourselves, are we? So it's a, it's, a, it's a never-ending process. But yeah, man, listen, like I said earlier to you, enjoy this album. Take time to breathe, yeah. too, and take care. Yeah, and enjoy yeah. this journey, man. I mean, you listen, you have achieved some insane fucking levels already. I mean, speaking on that success, and I know you're you're such a humble dude, and you're such a a giving man as well. You're, you're so empathetic towards the world around you. But are you are you proud of what you've done? Do you do you feel pride in what oh, you've yeah. accomplished so far? I feel really proud, man. I mean, I've, I think that I mean, like, I, you know, to 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 get more into the like the self flexing. I think what I'm most proud of is the fact that you know we potentially got a number one album next week. During a yes. for an album that I, that I never, I never once did a show for. I never. That's incredible. I didn't have a major record label, but not only that, the, the thing I'm most proud of is that for five days a week, for pretty much every week this year, I've been sat in a clinic with an IV in my arm. Yeah. So I feel, I feel, um, I, I feel really proud that I I was able to pull that off. Dude, fuck yeah. You're making me tear up, man. Jesus Christ. I'm not crying. You're crying. Well, yeah, no, but, but I, th I think that because for me, because for me, it's like, that is, that's a triumph for me. You know, even, yeah. even if I have to, even if I have to live with these symptoms the rest of my life and, and they're, and they're, and it's something that I have to eternally manage. Um, I, th I think that, I think that these little victories, um, make it, make me feel capable and, and they because mm. for so many years i felt so incapable and i felt so um uh paralyzed by my illness that when when i achieve something i mean this is huge even, even if i was totally healthy i would feel so like what the fuck is going on yeah. but the, the fact that i've managed to do it somehow 
without going down the traditional route, without having radio constantly blasting my songs to people, without, you know, it, it, it's been pretty much done with a lot of blood, sweat and tears and a lot of labor of love. And I think one of the main things is connecting the community around yeah. it and really engaging with people like yourself, people who have been massively helpful for this journey for me, people, just, just my fan base and everything and, and being a little bit more interactive. I think that's yeah. really helped. And it's yeah, really man. given the testament for me you know, like I'm competing. Well, I say competing. I, I never really like to see music as a competition, but I, I'm competing with these big music corporations who have got all these ty tried and tested methods and have got these all these big budgets and have got these all these big infrastructures on how to market. And if I'm coming on coming out on top of that again, I I think that's mostly due to my fan base and it's mostly to do with the people like yourself. So I think it's another testament for collaboration and and, and collective power. Hell yeah, the collective power of people. Hell yeah, man! Absolutely. Listen. And I was talking about this on a live stream last week that I think we all need to give this context and, and an outside perspective in that you are doing this independently, right? You, you do not have anywhere near the budgets, the teams, the connections that these label artists have. And, and I've said, look, I've always encouraged a lot of artists, like if the independent route is right for you, take it. This is why you can be your own boss. You can be in charge of your whole creative process and you know, if you want to get signed, you build your own buzz and then you get to the point where you have leverage on the labels. But at the end of the day, like being independent can only get you so far, right? It, it, mm. it can only get you so much exposure. It can only get you so far. But there's plenty of artists who can make a really good living being independently. And then you have like the 0.00001% of independent artists that are doing what you've done. And that is just a brand new level altogether. You, you've you essentially like created your own label at this point in time. Just in terms of your success, your fan base, you are now the blueprint that labels are looking at. Like, he did this organically. How the fuck can we do this? What do we have to do <laughs> now to get here? No, I'm dead fucking serious. Like, you know, you, you have really achieved something incredibly rare. And you are now in a very rarefied air. And what's fun about that, I think, is... That's an opportunity now because there's no like path before you where it's like, all right, other people have walked this path. This is where I can go. It's kind of like this. This is new explorations. This is this is new journeys. So I guess I guess what I'm getting to now is let's let's take pride in this. But also, I, I, I know a little bit of you and I, and I know what you're like. Where do we go from here? What's next? <laughs> well, mate, to be honest, I'm going to take a break for a little bit. I'm going to take I, I'm going to really focus on my health because even though that I'm out here in Canada five days a week in, in, in the clinic, I, like I was getting so consumed with this album that I wasn't really pouring myself 100%. You know, like some of the things that I have to do, which is the homework of this, I was neglecting a little bit and stuff. So I was meant to come home to the UK in summer. And the reason that I didn't is because I think I wasn't throwing myself into this healing as much as I could because obviously the record was taken off. And hmm. I, I don't think that was a wrong decision. I do believe that I, I should put health before everything else, but I was able to kind of like, slow down the recovery but also speed up the album but i think that was the right decision ultimately because this album has essentially set me up for life in, in whatever i think well at least for the next few years and in, in terms of being able to be financially independent myself not have to ever do like a crowdfunding thing again because mm. i don't ever like to feel like i'm asking for stuff and, and not I, i've always kind of pr prided myself on taking care of myself so the moment that i realized that i could do that totally independently off the back of my own sales felt that felt like a really proud moment as well so um so i think it was the right decision because i could finally step away from that knowing that if i have to stay here for longer i can financially take care of myself within that so the first thing is i'm going to take a few months to really focus on health probably for the rest of this year good and then and then coming into next year i'm working on i uh, you know all the, a lot of the songs were already written for it i've got the next album which is a very different U-turn. It's it, it's a guitar and singing bass, like really influenced by a lot of those early Britpop bands. You know, I grew Ooh, up on okay. a lot of like the Pix yeah, the Pixies, Blur, yeah. Oasis, Red Hot Chili Peppers, The Police, The Clash. Like I'm bringing a lot of those influences in, and I just really want to make like a timeless record full of songs, like the sort of songs that I grew up listening to. So. It, it, a lot of people who jumped on board because of the hip hop stuff, they might be like, "What the fuck? He's not making hip hop for this record." But I really want, I I really wanted to do that. I really wanted to almost like reinvent the sounds, the sonics, the 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 visuals, everything. Just totally come at it from a fresh place. And 
And um, so I'm really looking forward to it because, you know, I, I grew up busking on the streets and a lot of people who know me from like my big push videos or some of those early busking videos with Sam Tompkins, I really wanted to just like go back into that world a little bit and, and, and really immerse myself in kind of my, my roots of, of, of how I started coming up with all this music stuff. Um, so yeah, that, that's the next project really. I'm, I'm going to try and find a producer who I love. I'm going to lock, it may, probably over in the States, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lock myself in a studio for a month or two and I'm just going to do a whole album in one sitting, which is something I haven't done before. And then I'm going to come out with this album uh, and then just start releasing it. Yeah, that, so that's the plan. That's, that's uh, the future. Hey, hell yeah. And new, new challenges, push, push the boundaries as always. And, yeah. and you and I talked about this on the MG3 set. I think what you're doing musically is just, it, it's so exciting because so many of these elements that you're giving us, especially with your live acoustic performances and everything, it's like, it's like going to a play or theater, like the West End. But then also you get to go to like a dope ass hip hop show. But then also, you know, then you're in this genre and you're in this vibe and you're just like combining so many worlds of entertainment. And I feel like we're, we're creating a new genre almost of, of what can be done performance wise and how it can be digested and, and taken on board. So I, I think it's hell of exciting, man. I'm, I'm really looking forward to the next journeys. I mean, you even talked a little bit about possibly spending some time in the States, maybe LA or, or wherever the, uh, the, the world is your oyster at this point in time, go, yeah. go where you can link up and where you get the best influences and, and create, you know? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yeah, Listen, uh, just to bring it back around full circle, because I, I, I obviously want to push as many people as I can to this album. I don't want to leave any stones unturned here on this album. You, you talked a little bit about the rapping on this album, and that is a yeah. huge takeaway for me, is who is Ren as a rapper? And, and I think if you listen to this album, and I haven't listened to all of it yet, I, but obviously I was looking at the track list. There's, there's a lot that I've broken down been able to do. Yeah, there's, there's a lot... A flow is on here. There's some fast spitting. They're slowing it down. There's different pockets. There's rhyme schemes. There's word plays. There's so much versatility as a rap artist. I feel like this is a statement of Ren as a rapper. Mm. Was, was that kind of one of your goals for this album to go, you know what? This is my fucking pen game. This is, this is what I can do. That was, that was exactly it, mate. Like I, I wanted... Um... Because I always dabbled in rap with my earlier records and, and they were always quite eclectic. Some would be songs, some would be rap. I really wanted to make a record because there was a lot of people that I was, lo I was loving in the UK scene, like Ocean Wisdom and, and Getz and stuff like that. And I was like, I really wanted to make a record that was taken seriously in that scene mm. where some where some of those people were like, oh, fuck, I fuck with this. And, 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 wow, and yeah. I think, I think that like that's why I was put because it, it was like, almost just like this hunger to like, prove to myself that i could because it's diff it's difficult bro, bro i'm like i'm a fucking kid from north a, a small village in north wales do you know what i mean it's not like the most typical place for for a hip-hop artist to like or someone's making a hip-hop record to come from because it's it's a place that's not um as relatable to the world and to the culture of hip-hop so um i i really like i wanted to tie it to my own adversity because hip-hop for me is a, a lot of hip-hop is a triumph of overcoming ad adversary a lot of the themes mm. within it and and for me, my adversary was my health, which is why I called it Sick Boy. So I took, I took my, my battle, which was health, and, I, and I, I applied that to hip hop. And it was great, man, because like, it did everything I wanted it to. I mean, I had people like Fire in the Booth reach out to me. I had Ocean reach out to me afterwards and give me, give me props for, and, and uh, give me a follow for, for, for putting out. So people who I was really putting on a big pedestal were then coming to me without me even seeking it out. And being like, bro, this record's fucking sick, and that was a Fuck yeah. that was a massive like affirmation for me that what I was doing was on was on like a was on the right path. So I think, yeah, m more so, more than chart positions, more than anything, that was really that was really affirming for me that like winning the respect of my peers was I think was the most important thing for, about me for put, putting this hip hop record out in it. And Hell I think yeah. Did that, which is good. yeah! Are there um are there any more videos? around this album that are going to be released? Is there anything else that, uh, that people can I might, I, I'm, expect? I'm contemplating put, putting the video together for Seven Sins. I've got, the, okay. I've got the concept for it. I've got the concept for it. So I'm just going to see, because I've, obviously I've told you I'm going to take a little bit of time out. Yeah. I'm going to see how time, much time and effort that's going to take and, okay. and, and then make a decision on it. 
um, because that's one of my favorite tracks of the record is that one. So I, I might put a video together for that one. But um, yeah, other than that, the other ones will probably get lyric videos and, and, and that's it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that's the journey. Listen, if, if somebody who is watching this, who, who is like, who's, who, who's this, who's this guy with the, uh, with the English accent talking about Sasquatches and then, you know, complete systematic change. If, if they've never really heard your music, right? Five, give me five songs, five songs to point someone to that you think represents who you are as an artist right now. Off this album or, off, or from in general? In general. Okay. Well, my, okay. This, or, this is or, probably... Go on. Go on, go on. Yeah. My, my, li my list of just like songs that I'm, that I go back to myself, because I don't really listen to my own music because I've produced them to death. So I've heard them about a million times <laughs> by the time they're out. But some songs I will go back to. Um... From this album, it's probably from this album it's probably Seven Sins and Money Game. Um, power, I just love Power as a song. It's one of my my favorite songs I've power. ever done. It was just a bit, mm -mm. yeah, man. Yeah, just, you had a was, you had a very famous uh, driver in Power, didn't you? Yeah, what, did very, what, what he's very known for? He was driver, yeah. great, great Uber driver. I mean, he's he was a great Uber driver. He's, he's, yeah, he man. should be in more videos. He should, yeah, yeah. He needs to stop slacking and getting more videos. Yeah, um, and then. Um, I really like um, I really like Chalk Outlines as a song. I really like Blind Died as a song with me and that me and Sam did because it was one of the first songs that I ever released that got my career going after a lot of Blind Died. I've, I've not heard that one. I'm gonna have to write that one down. I should check out Blind Died. Yeah, and then um, and then the the whole tale of Jenny and Screech as well. Oh That's, yeah, that, I'm just just really really proud of that. And then and then High Ren for obvious reasons. But um, yeah, those ones I'd say. Beyond five, but that's okay. You don't follow rules anyways. You make your own fucking rules. So we'll we'll take it. <laughs> yeah. I like it, man. I, I, th I, think, I think sitting somebody down through the whole tale of Jenny and Screech is still one of my favorite things to make somebody watch. Um, I know. I, I'm just so proud of how that, that whole thing came together. I, I think, think that is one of my favorite things. I've ever Chuck, done. Chuck outlines that, that, that hits me, man. Like I, sometimes I'm like, I'm doing something or like I'm trying to be a dad. And then your fucking like song talk outlines get stuck in my head for whatever reason. Like some of your, your shit is very catchy, my friend. So like it just it, 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 it will just hit me at like the most awkward times when I'm like, I remember I think I was like sat meeting uh, my kid's teacher for the first time. Right. And as I'm walking into the classroom, I'm like, murderer. And, it, and it, she, she, she kind of looked for her second. I'm like, hey, how you doing? What's going on? <laughs> It's not what you want to be singing in a room full of kids, man. No, I don't think so. I, uh, <laughs> I don't think so. Um, yeah, man. No, but so so the next album that I'm planning, the, the vibe is going to be a lot more a, a, the, the chalk outline sort of vibe. If people are kind of wondering. Oh yeah. Sort of oh, vibe. I can't. I can't wait for that, man. I like. Listen. Um, we're we're here for the whole motherfucking journey. Sorry for uh -huh. my fucking language. Um, takeaways from the album after after yep. someone has gone through the journey of this album. What do you hope they get from it? What, 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 what do you hope it is? Is it, is it an experience? Is, is it some new ideas? What, it, what, 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 what do you hope gets conveyed? Who, yeah, yeah. I think it's dependent on the per because it's going to be individual for everyone. For like, for people who have gone through a lot of chronic health problems and, and problems with mental health, I think they're going to get a lot from it um, that's a companion to them and, 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 and something that makes them feel seen. And then for people who haven't gone through that, Hopefully there's enough balance of like just vibey tracks for them to just vibe with and, and just want to put out when they're hanging out with friends on a, on an evening or just want to vibe to or put them out at the gym or you know what I mean like so so I'm hoping that there's something something that serves everybody and you know whatever that whatever that purpose is um it's kind of out of my control but I just hope that I just hope that whatever somebody takes from it is is feeds them in whatever way. Is there anything you would do different? on this on this journey of of completing this album i mean right now i'd rewrite the whole thing but that's only because i'm a fucking perfectionist <laughs> and because i feel like my i feel like my writing uh -huh. has come on a lot since some of those earlier tracks so i'm i'm eternally dissatisfied but so i'd probably like hit the drawing board and rewrite everything from scratch and come up with new beats but that's that's just the way it is man. that's, that's right you go listen you go you go make this next album right and you just <laughs> show everyone what you can do with that and then yeah. maybe another like two, three albums down the line, you turn back around. It's time to get back in the rap bag and just show people how far oh, the yeah, progression man. has gone. 
no, I'm, and bro, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure that littered amongst this, I, this, this isn't like a permanent step away from me doing hip hop. I'm sure. No. Because like, I even had a question mark in my head about um, doing a collaboration project. Because now mm. that I've got a lot of those people hitting me up, you know, I had like Ocean hitting me up. I had like Prof and. Um, and I was chatting to Webby a oh, little prof bit. Oh, Prof yeah, dope state. artist, dope um, artist. Yeah, there's like, there's, I, I was considering go, just dropping like, uh, but th again, this won't be until, and fuck, I'll, I'll chat to you about this as well, Knox, it'll be good to, good to get you on board with this as well. But like next year around, just when I've, my health's feeling a bit more hmm. level-headed, I, 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 I want to start potentially doing like a mixtape of like a collaboration mixtape where every track is just a collaboration. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Look, yeah. we get we get a ton of comments anytime I react to you. When when are we gonna collab? And it's kinda like I'm sure it will happen. Just Yeah, that's the time. Just, man. It's 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 gotta be the right time. And you know, yeah. you got a lot on your plate, I got a lot on my plate. I'm listen, man, I'm I'm up for it down the line. First and foremost, take care yeah. of yourself. And I'm sure yeah. when the cards align, we will uh we will we will we'll bring make it together. Some bangers. Fuck yeah. Yeah, mate. Fuck yeah, yeah. man. Listen, everybody in chat right now, do me a huge favor. Drop a fire emoji in chat for Ren. If you have not downloaded the album yet, what are you doing with your life? Go download it. Go get your mom to download it. Go to Miss Bevel's house and make her download it. And don't end oh, yeah, up in I'll, a tea I'll, kettle like me. I wanted to say as well, so we, we don't get the official confirmation of charting until next Friday in the UK. We've entered in a really strong position, um, but... It looks like from the projections that we're like up against Drake. So if anyone wants to download the album, it's only five pounds. Um, it will really help like secure that number one spot for next week. So that'll be that'll be hella helpful. One hundred percent. So yeah, that's uh that's the iTunes charts, right? Is that is that what we really want to? No, no, no. This no, is, just this is, everything. This is download anyway. charts. This is like the iTunes charts. We actually we actually have hit number one in the UK. Hell but yeah. For the official charts, the official charts takes into account iTunes, Amazon, Spotify. Um, your physical own, sales, your own website. Account. Yeah. Your own physical sales. Yeah. So yeah. So it basically we're account, absolutely everything. wherever yeah. you can get it, go get it. That is, that is the yes, best sir. way that you can support right now. Let's make history yeah. for an independent artist. Let's get this man to number one across. But let me tell you something, man, if you even like beat Drake in some countries or match him, that's going to turn some heads. That is going to yeah, turn man. some heads. People, it, even Drake could probably be like, who the fuck is this Ren guy? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Listen, man, thank you so much for your time, for spending it, for kicking a little bit of it with me. I know Ren's got a ton mm -hmm. on his channel coming up. I think you're you're live streaming on Twitch all week, aren't you? You're going through the tracks on the album. You're giving some behind the yeah, scenes I'll, stuff. I'll, be, I'll, I'll probably be jumping on Twitch in about 15 minutes or so if anyone wants to go and watch that. But yeah, there we go. Everybody, everybody yeah. go on a Twitch. Go check him out. Um, and as far as my end, like I was gonna, fuck. What am I gonna do now? I didn't. I didn't think we talked for so long. I thought I'd do like twenty minutes with you, and then I jump in and listen to some of this album, breaking it down. But we've we've had a good chat, and I kind of want this to to live on its own. I don't know. Run run my channel, Ren. What what should I do? Should we just uh, should we just wrap it up here, and I'll just do separate breakdowns, or should I? Well, I'm, uh, it's up to you, man. I'm happy to give it like half an hour's breathing space before I jump on Twitch, if you want, because then you've got like. And then if you want to check out some shit and, and talk live stream yourself, it's up to you, bro. Hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. I tell you, I, I tell you what, chat, I will, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll end it with the homie and I will give you, I'll give you, I'll give you one or two songs. I don't, I don't want to do, let me, let me see your track list right now. Let's see. I really, let's, I really let's, wanna, let's see if I wanna, you can pick. I really want to hear you do uh, seven sins, man. I think, I think what I'll do homie is I'll, I will save seven sins for its own breakdown. Because I want to okay. like, I want to like really do that justice and just like, because okay. you've gotten so excited about it and, and yeah. like, you've got me really excited about it now. So I think I will save that. I will do that like early next week, like on Tuesday or Wednesday, I'll drop, yeah. I'll drop seven maybe, maybe do Maybe do Loco, mate. Loco is a Loco? fun one. Okay. Yeah. Do Loco. I'm, I'm going to jump off this and I'm just going to watch you, mate. I think. All right. Honest. All right. We're going to, we're going to do Loco chat. I see uh Loco in, in Wicked Ways. Maybe you guys can get two. I'll give you, I'll give you a double dose. What do you think, Ren? Loco and Wicked uh, Ways? You yeah, pick them. Yeah. Do Loco and Wicked Ways or Loco and Uninvited. Get the chat to vote. Oh, Loco and, ah, I see Uninvited. Okay. All right. I'll leave, I'll All leave right. you the chat. But anyways, my friend, thank you so much for your time. I'm sure we will link up again very soon, man. Take care of yourself. Always, man. And again, Take care, man. Love you, bro. well done, homie. Take care. Love you, man. All right, double knocks now. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to switch views. Let's see if I can be smooth with this. Because I tried to set this up beforehand. 
All right, now that's full. Now we just got to take away the Ren layover. And then we got to take away the Discord. Look at that. Sometimes I do things like I have intelligence. Did you guys enjoy that? Did you guys enjoy it? That was, uh, that was fun. That was fun. Listen, after this, we're going to do, uh, I think next live stream, we're going to go out and we're going to find some squatches together. What do you guys think about that? That's just, uh, it's giving me some new ideas and inspiration. All right, where's my window capture? Is that it? Hang on, I've got a window capture somewhere that has the Spotify. I know it does. I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. Is it there? No. Oh, no, it's a source. It's a source. Hey, I'm going to talk to myself until I get this for you guys. Browser source? Nope, that's up there. Where is it? I want this. I want to find it. That window capture lives up there. Let's see if I can edit it, though. We're going to pull up a Spotify for you guys. Spotify, there it is. I'm trying to sing Murderer terribly. Look at that, people. Look at that. All right, whoa. Chat's going crazy. Let's have some good times. There's a lot of uninvited. I see a lot of uninvited. Homie wants me to do Loco. So what should we do first? It's between Loco, Uninvited, and Wicked Ways. Hey, thank you so much for the super chat, Jester. Appreciate you. All right. Few people are commenting loco, few people are commenting uninvited. It looks like it's gonna be loco and uninvited. Looks like it's gonna be loco and uninvited. So I think we will start on loco and then we will jump into uninvited. Tariq, seven since the first song, Knox will not get the 100% achievement on first take. <laughs> I never get the 100% achievement. Uh, music is subject to interpretation. Uh, I'm human. There's a lot of things I miss along the way. I just try to break it down as best I can. I hopefully, hopefully, I don't do it all because. That's up to you guys to have your own experiences and to find your own Easter eggs within it. I only try to help light up some of the path for you all. Renner, a new music video. Let's get it. Power is an epic jam. I love Seven Sins and Loco off the album. Well, I love the whole album, but these are fresh for me. Absolute bangers. Every track. Love you guys. Huge shout out to Renner for the $100 donation. See, oh man, I didn't realize this. Like, you guys were dropping in these donos while I'm busy talking to Ren. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to split these donos with Ren because I feel like I, I I don't know if all these are for me, man. Because the homie was in here, so that's fine. I'll go back and, and split it to him. All right, I tell you what, let's uh let's jump into this. We got Loco first. Shout out to the homie Ren. My style is loco, Yoko on no my neck vocal I'm not your uncle, I'm anti-social Postal, danger to the world, I've gone global Schizophrenic menace, put myself in a chokehold Ho ho, yeah Schizophrenic menace, put myself in a chokehold Yoko Ono, shout out right there But you know what's super dope that I've already clocked right now is What in the beatbox is happening? There's no traditional instruments, the only instruments are, are his voice Like he made the snare He's got He's got the melodies bouncing it. What? There's like six or seven just vocal tracks that he made a beat out of with his mouth. That's so dope. <laughs> One ring to rule them all. What in the Lord of the Rings bars is happening right there playing off of ring ring versus lord in the ring and gimli the dwarf bars come on i love gimli ring, ring, you could be fro are you are you team legolas or are you team gimli let me know let me know in chat gimli i'ma take this with the man that smoke it like a chimney i'm a punk rocker sucker no i'm not an indie i'ma take this with the mama smoke it like a chimney see i love that sort of like very punchy staccato delivery back and forth speed through it and then kind of slow it down on the last two words slow it down slow it down very cool rhythmic technique right there with the bindi yes i will be in the shed taking my meds i slice up beats like a knife through bread when I go bowling, I used to capitate heads, I lose brains in the lane, so they call me miscellaneous. I'm the type of kid who makes cotton. Brains in the lane, so they call me miscellaneous, like something is missing, versus miss 
the lane what in the miscellaneous scheme the word play on that was fucking dope and i was still going off of the bowling with decapitated heads bar this is christian bale american psycho right here these brains in the lane so they call me miscellaneous i'm the type of kid who makes cotton wool dangerous i'm trying hard not to lose my mind <laughs> don't play with cotton wool kids it's very dangerous for yourself my mind I see stars when I close my eyes. Boy. I try to keep the duh, duh, duh. It's kind of like pitch perfect, like a riff off is happening right now. It's only red, and then you hear those harmonies, those higher harmonies at the back. Man, I want to watch the making of this. He probably had a ton of fun. Like, what other noises can I make with my mouth right now and fit this into this beat? Boy. I try to keep this. What? The lanes is a part of Brighton, too, so that line goes even further? Fuck yeah, let's go. That's a triple. Puto, watch me get messy. Is that is that Lionel Messi? Maybe we, we we'll give it to him. Why not? But the Scarface lines he just talked about the Scarface and Breaking Bad influences. You hear it right here. You know what I love is like he gets like these themes and these ideas in his head, and then. What's really dope on an album is if you have sort of like breadcrumbs that like attach themselves to other tracks. And I touched on this when we were doing some of his lyric videos. Like there were some songs, like there's just certain like Muhammad Ali references and other types of references, the mozzarella, the cheddar, that just like tie in throughout. So I love this kind of like anti-hero Scarface theme that we got out of Money Game th 3, but we're also getting right here on Loco, just in a bar and a punchline. USA, puto, sub-buster cop, watch me get messy. Mentos and coke, I'm about to explode. I'm so open-minded to my... Eyes can't close. Doctor, doctor, give me some smiles. I'm so open minded that my eyes can't close. That's a bar and a half right there. Doctor, doctor, give me some smiles. A 20 pack of Valium, numb for a while. Flow like the Nile, evil crocodile. I've got the local zoo, say, uh -oh. don't speed that. Evil crocodile, now reference. Funky. I spent a bit of time with the monkey. I gave one a Valium, now he's a junkie. <laughs> Humpty Dumpty, he fell down. All the king's horses were stomped somehow. Hmm. Cool. All the horses were stomped. Horses don't even have opposable thumbs. <laughs> I'm trying not, not to lose my mind. All right, you get it now. The song is loco, right? Which is crazy. So this is Ren trying not to lose his mind, but he really is losing his mind. And I think I love just kind of like the representation. Oh, yeah, like horses don't have opposable thumbs. Like it's just like a Captain Obvious, like light bulb moment. Like he says it and it's like just it should be so profound and earth shattering but it's something that should be universally accepted which just kind of ties into sort of the psychosis and the madness that he's playing off of i really love the tone of this again it's sort of it's tongue-in-cheek it's a little bit naughty in places his devil may care and it's all over the place it's it's eccentric right that's what he wants to show is this sort of craziness and kind of probably like the oversaturation of his own mind and he's just got no filter right now whatever he's thinking of is just coming out onto the page how all the horses were stomped. Horses don't even have opposable thumbs. I'm trying not, not to lose my mind. The boy. I see stars when I close my eyes. The boy. I try to keep this beast inside. The boy. But I'm close to the edge and I might lose my head. So I guess you better hide. Mm -hmm. Start juttering, mm. juttering. So I guess you better hide. Like he just gets a little bit more aggressive right there. I love how he's like so smooth right here. Like he's singing it out. He's, he's going off on his melodies. But then he just brings back that little note of aggression and that little bit of tension with that tonal change right there. But I'm close to the edge and I might lose my head. So I guess you better hide. My start juttering. I'm stuttering, buttering words like flora. Edible, spreadable, style go like aurora. Buttering words like flora? I just put that on my toast today. I'm stuttering, buttering words like flora. Edible, spreadable, style go like aurora. Nice. Oh, light, ignite the night tonight. Excite the mic, right? Like a viper bite. It's just my venom. It's venom. Northern light, the night, excite like a fight, but bite the dot, the dot, the dot, the dot. I love that super condensed rhyme scheme and flow, man. Again, so many flow switches. Him and I just talked about this. Like, he is really showing off his pen game and his ability to just constantly change gears with the flows to have these condensed multi-syllable rhyme schemes, man. It's so smooth. And on top of that, he takes it to another level because he produces motherfucker himself. Who needs an instrument? 
I got my mouth. Oh, the light ignite the night tonight. Excite the mic, right? Like a viper bite. It's just my venom. It's random. My lucky number seven. I don't follow fashion, so I'm wearing double denim. Mel Gibson crazy. My mind's a lethal weapon. Got kicked out the fruit store for grabbing a girl's melon. So get on. With a baseball bat, I thought I'd rock a pin. I'm knocking you for six. Wanna hit with a beat, with a bang, with a boom. I'm a f- Mel Gibson lethal weapon bars back to back on that, baby. Baseball bat, I thought I'd rock a But I like the uh, the ghost melon. Got kicked out. Melon, he's crazy. I'm knocking you for six. Wanna hit with a beat, with a bang, with a boom. I'm a fly right out of this room. I'ma take off to that moon I'ma rip when I spit when I bite my lip And I sick when I bust my mood Like yes sir I'ma rip when I spit when I bite my lip And I sick when I bust my mood Yeah Take this microphone and make some acapella Music for your eardrums and spoken like a texture mm. Suck it up like bricks Yes I'm sucking up the texture nice. I bring the vibes right into the sector I'm trying hard That's not a to vibe. lose my mind Whoa. I see stars when I close my eyes Whoa. I try to keep this beast inside The boy but I'm close to the edge and I might lose my head, so I guess you're better hide. Nice. La 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 la. That's almost like a little bit of sort of reggae vibes for me. So many different influences that you find on rent tracks, man. You never know where the next turn is going to take you. Oh, there's a little bit of like a demonic track there towards the end. Lo, 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 lo. I just caught that. Who would want to hear a whole album of Ren just like making beats with his voice? Knox, Ren said in chat, do wicked ways next. Oh, Ren has spoken. The Lord of the Rings. Yeah? I didn't catch it, but I'll be- I will believe my chat then. Ren weighed in, said do wicked ways. All right, we got it. We got wicked ways. I got you guys. I am the eye of the storm. I am the poisonous one. I am the grip of the gun. I am the zip of the body bag zipping the shot when it's done. I am the hit and the run. I am the product. I am the zip of the body bag zipping shot when it's done. Ah, oh, I just love the way that that's flipped out right there, man. So smooth. When it's shot when it's done, I am the hit and the run. I am the prodigal son. I am a tail of the hun. Rhythm spectacular, cardiovascular, rhyming on beast when I run. I am the G. I am the genie of flow. Brands of genie is dreaming and scheming like glow. I am a mammoth of flow. Hit when your stamina is low. Oh. My G, I get my low. Da, 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 do, 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 do. I love that because he's got a cool little internal, internal to external rhyme scheme. We've talked about these A to B rhymes that Ren really uses to his advantage, but I love how he's also using the change in his tone going up high on certain words and then bringing you back down like again for me it's cadence switch ups it's flow switch ups it's rhyme switch ups and that's when you know you're dealing with a more technical rapper and a more technical MC and that's what he's giving us right now I'm loco remember what I just talked about how I like when albums have sort of a synergy and different themes kind of linked to each other. Well, we just broke down Loco, so here he is playing off of being Loco still with just a little punchline that ties it back to that. Loco, so cold, my vocal is supposed to top shelf. I'm Loco, not social, chewing toads too, by myself. <laughs> hey. I am the bite of the beast. I am the night of the feast. I will be- what in the Alice in Wonderland is happening? Chewing toadstools by himself? In the peace. Hit like Muhammad Ali, cause I come with the dangerous reach. I am ah, the- there's my Muhammad Ali shout out. He loves his, I didn't, I've never asked him about boxing yet, but I, I do have to do that one day. Because he, he really keeps up with his boxers, too. And then there was uh, Mark of the Beast. So, uh, you know, 666 Mark of the Beast. What's going on, people? We'll be fighting the peace. Hit like Muhammad Ali because I come with the dangerous reach. I am the wolf of the sheep. Light on my feet when I creep. Uh. I am the cousin of sleep. Sleep is the cousin of death, so I guess I'm the grimmest I read. I am the nice. Of the dragon. I am the cousin of sleep. Sleep is the cousin of death. That's a smooth little flip up again. Da 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 Very dope pocket, man. That's how I guess I'm the grimmest I read. I am the nemesis. Enter the dragon. Put emphasis on the create. The grimmest I reap. Playing off of the Grim Reaper, playing off of being sleep, the cousin of death, then being death, embodying that. I love that. Keep it grim, my friend. The cousin of death, so I guess I'm the grimmest I read. I am the nemesis, enter the dragon, put emphasis on the creation of time. So they call me the genesis, venom is mine. the therapist, sit and recline in the mind of the specialist. Oh, yeah, they got the idea. Creation of rhymes. He's creating this, but also going back to the days of creation and the book of Genesis. And then as we know, we're going to give Ren a triple. I see him in chat right now. But uh, Genesis started this whole 
sick boy album journey for us. Let's get it. Oh, Ooh. sweet Jesus, oh my, my, what will fill my that was appetite? Dope. What will feed this hunger in my stomach growing every night? Oh my goodness, oh my days, I'm stuck in my wicked way. Sometimes I fall off the path of righteousness, but that's okay. Oh, sweet Jesus, oh my, my, Lord, I need a other by Lord, I need redemption from the tension growing in my mind. Oh, oh sweet Jesus, da 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 That's taking sort of that mainstream triplet flow, but man, he's really added some melody to that, and I love... The demonic vocal off to the side. This is giving me like right here, this little part. I don't know if it's a bridge. I don't know if it's the hook right now. I haven't heard enough of the track yet, but it's, yeah, it's like Kendrick Lamar type of vibes, man. I love this. Oh, sweet Jesus, oh my, my, Lord, I need a other by, Lord, I need redemption from the tension growing in my mind. Oh my goodness, oh my days, I'm caught in my wicked ways. Sometimes I fall off the path of righteousness, but that's okay. Yeah. I am mm. the blood run red. I am the day of the dead. Yeah. I am the hole in your head. Pull it, pull it, lead. Yeah. Fuck up the whole damn program. I'm Hulk Hogan, Wolverine, Logan, Trojan, horse with the force of a four-door Hummer. Motherfucker, uncle. I am the cream of the crop. <laughs> I'm the, the Hulk Hogan to Logan Wolverine bars is going on here. Hang on, I want to shout something out. Ali said in an interview that Tyson would have beaten him too. Oh, yeah. The force of a full door hammer. Motherfucker, uncle. I am the cream of the crop. I'm the behemoth of the pop. I will be stopping the clocks. I am the one that makes you bow down when you're down there. Suck my mm. reload. Pop, pop, pop. No shame point at pop. It's almost like uh, the different lines, right? I am this. All these sort of hyperboles. You know, you, you think of, well, who is really omnipotent and it's God. But in this case, the song is wicked way. So it's making me think of, uh, the contradiction to that. The devil. Cream of the crop. I'm the behemoth of pop. I will be stopping the clocks. I am the one that makes you bow down when you're down there. Suck my, uh, <laughs> love, pop, pop, pop. No shame point at pop. Pop, pop, pop. What rhymes with all that? Suck my what? You're a naughty boy, Ren. My, uh, Reload, pop, 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 no shame, point at pop Make him drop, main mode, pull up, stop Drop the body off uh. Mother Mary, me, oh my Think Wow, I feel a fight inside. another flow switch and production change up And again, like we're here Stop, drop the body off Drop that body off, da da da, and then he kind of smooths it out here with the switch up. Mother Mary, me, oh my, think I feel a fight inside, dealing with my demons, I've been... Mother Mary, right? Praying to the Virgin Mary. There's a lot of religious references. You know what? I didn't ask you about that either. Obviously, so many religious references throughout this album, even at the end of Money Game 3, and then you talk about being an agnostic, and I just want to talk about how you kind of... Your, your views on that and bringing those worlds together. But you know what? I'm sure we will talk again in front of a crowd. Uh, Mother Mary, me, oh my. Think I feel a fight inside. Dealing with my demons. I've been kneeling. Pray to with the sky. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Leave me strung out on the cross. Let the crows mm. feast on my bones. I lose control when the beat drops. Again, there's more religious references, right? Leave me strung out on the cross. Who was strung out on the cross, as we know? Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Leave me strung out on the cross. Let the crows feast on my bones. I lose control when the beat drops. Mm. Liar, liar. Your pants on fire, I pray to a false messiah For protest conflicted in a convoluted magnifier Oh my goodness, oh my days I'm caught in my wicked ways Sometimes I fall off That's a really profound line right here I want to bring this back one more time False messiah For protest conflicted in a convoluted magnifier oh my Thought process convoluted In this magnifier which, which could obviously be taken as, you know the music that he's creating because it's magnifying this convoluted thought process that he has or his views on, you know, social media and the world in which we live and all this exposure that he has at this moment in time. On fire, I pray to a false messiah for protest conflicted in a convoluted magnifier. Mm. Oh my goodness, oh my days, I'm caught in my wicked ways. Sometimes I fall off the path of right. Sometimes I fall off the path. I love right there how you just hear, you know, the drum kick. Da, 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 da. He really loves doing this. Like, Ren, one thing I noticed that I really enjoy, if you're, if you're still here, man, is like a lot of producers that I've worked with, and even when I'm doing stuff, like, you know, you may like experiment with some chords or you have a new sound that you introduce and maybe like you repeat it later on, but you seem to like find these sounds and you might have a certain sequence of them, but then they're gone and that's it for that moment. And then, then you find a new sound and then you find something new to do and then you do that for a little bit and you have fun with that. And then we move on to something else. And there's so many just like different progressions. And this is what I mean. Like whenever I listen from a producer standpoint to like Ren's songs and Ren's albums, I, I just love this. Always expect the unexpected. 
you never really know where the production is going to take you and, and where it's going to change to i think that's called adhd <laughs> oh my god what the fuck did i just stop it on what is happening here Got a war like I'm going to go ahead and whip So I love how we start here. Like it's up here. That's the first word that we start with. Ah, and then we drop down. And you get again sort of that spitter tech nine esque delivery right there. Danny Glover, lethal weapon. We go in a war, my friend. We sticking up liquor stores, but I love that. One two to 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 one two. Very very good progression of the rhyme writing. Just two syllable rhyme writing, but there's nothing in between. It's one two to one two to one two to one two to one two. That was dope. What the fuck? This is what I mean. And now this piano just comes out of nowhere. How can you? You can't do this, sir. This is not allowed. You can't go into this fast ass chopper flow, right? And just fucking speed through the stop sign. And then all of a sudden, oh, hang on. Let me throw this little just beautiful piano melody right here. Let me just mellow this out. Right here. Always kill it. Body back, zip it. I'ma feel it like I always feel it. Keep it so prolific. Oh my goodness, so oh my days. I'm stuck in my wicked ways. Sometimes I fall off. Shit is illegal. A path of righteousness, but that's okay. Wicked ways. Sometimes I fall off the path of righteousness, but that's okay. And like we talked about, just learning to accept this duality within us all. There's light and dark within all of our paths. Embrace both, because that helps us appreciate the light. This was a fucking vibe. Obviously, I can see why Ren wanted me to hit up Wicked Ways. Like, I love Loco. I love the production on, on Loco and how clever that was with the beatboxing because that's just a different level altogether. But, I mean, the rap flows on this, man. Some of these just switch-ups and technicals and delivery. This is MCing at its finest right there. That was dope. All right, I know Ren wants to, uh, to go live. I know a lot of people were asking for uninvited. Is Ren still here? Is he waiting to go live? Do you want me to do uninvited or, or should we save that for its own breakdown? Because I will tell you what I'm going to do early next week, Seven Sins. Seven Sins is, is going to get its own breakdown. Uh, Sick Boy Part 2, I see, to end the album is also going to get its own breakdown. <clears throat> so it's just a question of uninvited. Let's do uninvited. Oh. Hitting the thing. Finish when you finish. I'm easy. You, sh you shouldn't announce that to the world. All right. I'm going to fill it up with water. We're going to do We're gonna do uninvited while he's here. We're going to do it. We're going to do uninvited, and then we're going to wrap up this stream, and then we're all going to go. And then since Ren lurked on my chat, I'm going to go lurk on his chat on Twitch. Let's do it. We're going to do uninvited. I wasn't invited to do this one, but I'm going to do it. You came in uninvited. Two planets collided. I don't really like it being on my own. Take that how you like it. Huh. I don't really mind if you're still undecided. Please just know. All I want to do is get inside of the moment when it's right. And have a moment with no ties and then go. What in the cliffhanger innuendos just happened right there? All I want to do is get inside of the moment of, of the moment. 
putting that in a Valentine's Day card. You just put that on like the left hand of the card. I just want to get inside and then like dot, dot, dot. And then like when you turn to the back of the card of this moment, it's a beautiful moment. Let's hold hands and skip through a field of rainbows. That was cheeky. Take that how you like it. I don't really mind if you're still how you like it. I don't really mind. I love like sort of the internal I, I, I sounds, right? And then no. So you've got like the I, which is kind of higher taking you here. So you, you condense that. Even even like your, your sort of rap rhyme writing when you're singing too. Like, so you got three internals with the I sounds. And then you have a lower O sound as the end rhyme. So it's really cool because it's super catchy, man. Like this is, this is another one that's going to get stuck in my head. Great. Great. I can't wait to go to the next parent-teacher meeting. And it's like, I can't wait to come in, inside and, 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 and meet you. What I want to do is get inside of the moment when it's right and have a moment with no ties and then go shake my fries. Make my order supersize and multiply and then divide and get low. It's a simple situation with an obvious equation. You and me collaborating for the night. I did not order the number two at the restaurant today. What in the shake my fries just happened? My order supersize and multiply and then divide. Sub supersize and orders? Hello. It's a simple situation with an obvious equation. You and me collaborating for the night. <laughs> Leave no room for hesitation or for awkward conversation. Just enjoy the syncopation when it's right. You came in uninvited. Just, just enjoy the syncopation. <laughs> I, lo I love how this is just like, it's saying so nonchalantly. Like it, it has like sort of that pace of like a, a, you know, feel good, get along type of, you know, we're, we're going to enjoy the night type of song. But then like he just comes out of left field with supersizing it and getting low. And he just has these lines where it's like, we're supposed to be going here. And all of a sudden it just drops down to here. And you're like, what in the brain fuck is happening right now? I love the innuendo game. It's a simple. Si it's almost like it's kind of like trolling songs like this in a sense, but still he's made a song like this. I love it. it, it very, very creative. With an obvious equation, you and me collaborating for the night. Leave no room for hesitation or for awkward conversation. Just enjoy the syncopation when it's right. You came in uninvited. Two planets colliding. I don't really like it. Being on my own. Take that how you like it. I don't really mind if you're still undecided. Please just know. All I want to do is get inside. Of the moment when it's right and have a moment. Barry White is being serenaded in my headphones right now. Can we please spam some french fries in chat right now? Let's supersize this up, everyone. Sometimes you just got to go with the flow, you know what I mean? When planets collide. That's, uh, that's science, people. It's also how babies are made. You're welcome. Read my mind, let's exist between the lines. Shooting past the stopping signs, moving past the stars align. And when you get some time, could you give some time? Back to my Even that, I mean, this is this is not a first date. This this is a one night stand. I feel like we're we're shooting past stop signs here. All right, just ignore all the signals. Signs, moving past the stars align. And when you get some time, could you give some time? Back to mine with a glass of wine. And if I get in front, would you get behind? Could you do that thing I like? It's a simple calculation with it. If I get in front, would you get get behind? I don't I don't understand that. What what are they doing? Are they dancing? Could you do that thing I like? It's a simple calculation with an easy formulation. <laughs> you and me fornificating for the night. <laughs> Let me make my presentation in person on procreation. Let This is what would solve the world. You know what, Ren? All of our 
institutional talk or talk on democracy, everything. Fuck it. You know what would solve it? If everybody made more babies, procreate, do your job. Mankind for the win. Let me make my presentation in person on procreation. Let's forget all obligations and unwind. You came oh my god, even like a simple line, like let me make a present. Like I just picture a slideshow right now. This this right here, this is where my penis goes. And then we'll progress from there. For the night. Let me make my presentation in person on procreation. Let's I love this song. Obligations and <laughs> I know, I'm you loving it. Came in uninvited. Two planets collided. I don't really like it. Being on my own. Take that how you like it. I don't really mind it. You're still undecided. Please just know all I want to do is come inside. Of the moment when it's <laughs> right. <laughs> Just uh, great minds think alike. That was a joke that I dropped earlier. All I want to do is come inside. Of the moment. Of the moment. Stay in the moment, people. I can have a moment with no ties and then go. Open wide. Make my order super size and multiply and then divide and get low. Get low. Get low. I yes. Just come. Together as two people in this moment. <laughs> oh that could be taken in so many ways you know what i love about that it really it, it's catchy i would i would listen to that again i've really enjoyed the the groove and the in the vibe of that one i think if i played that for my wife though she would look at me like what the fuck are you doing tonight you're sleeping downstairs there champ <laughs> No, but the innuendo, I, I love how, like, the way that you feel when listening to, wait, the way that I feel when listening to a song about Ren's, uh, anyways, the way that you feel when listening to it is, like, get myself into more trouble. You just, you're, you're meant to, like, just enjoy it and vibe out, right? But then he just has these lyrics, these just, like, naughty innuendos that make you go, wait, what the fuck? No, the, the song's taking me here. Why are, you, why are you doing this? And then we start to, like, groove out again and everything's fine. And then he does it again and again. And he just keeps just like sliding these little things in on the side. I love it. I just, I, I love the whole tongue in cheek nature of that song. And it's super catchy. It's just fun, isn't it? That's a, that's a dope switch up on the album, especially what Love Music Part 4. Yeah, that's a good lead in off of that because that kind of sets the tone. And then we get to Uninvited. And then Out to What You Want, which is like old school vibes. Yeah, that's a, that's a dope just different vibe and different track to just sit there on the album that no one's really going to expect. And it's just going to come out of left field, man. Did you guys enjoy that? Please spam some fries in chat. All right. I'll tell you what, people. i tell you what. The, the homie has been very gracious to wait. If you all are here, you know he is about to go live on his Twitch. He is going to dive further into this album. As far as things go on my channel, early next week, Seven Sins is happening. I will also be doing a separate breakdown to Sick Boy Part 2. That is going to happen. But please do go support the album. Go download it. Let's get this man to number one by next Friday. I know that we could do it. Huge shout out to Ren for spending time with me. Great interview. Always love the vibes. Ren, <laughs> congratulations, man. Just, just enjoy the chat. So well deserved. So well deserved, man. Congrats on getting this album done. Everything that I've heard so far, it's one hell of a project. I got two tracks left to do this to finish it out. It looks like, yeah, man, what a project. What a project. What a stream. Thank you so much for your energy chat. Listen, really, really quickly while I have you guys in here, I know it's going super damn fast, but let me shout some of you out as well. Let me, let me give some props back to you, please. So please let me know where you're from. Let me know where you're hailing from right now. We'll give some quick shout outs and then we'll sign out. Because it's not just about me. It's not just about Ren. You are the ones who keep us going. You are the ones who lift us up. You are the ones who bring the energy, who make this job fun as hell. Bobski from London. Wits and Girl from Birmingham. Let's go. <clears throat> Hex and Kind from Germany. Bell Jam from NYC. Marty DeHart from Nashville. Danielle from Wales. Let's go. Wales in the building. Austin from Michigan. Minerva's from Greece. Kat from Canada. 
Emmy from Texas, Julia from Poland, Doc Doc Cat from Calgary, Susan from London. Let's go. Robin from Idaho, Andrew from the United Kingdom, Zoja from Slovenia, Kissy Kiss from Arizona, Aki from Australia, Zenitha from Finland, Dawn B567 from the USA, Tasha from Denmark, Sherry from Seattle, John from Wales, Alan Tad from Melbourne, Jester from Newport, Gil from the UK, Karen from Brighton, Cheeky Burger from South Africa, Insidious Beats, the homie. Thank you so much for the love earlier in chat, by the way, man, from Scotland. Lisa from Connecticut, Sharon from Nottingham. Nadine says, love you, let's go. Matt, fellow Marylander in the building, I love to see it. Ash from Australia, Tracy from Northern Ireland, Petra from Croatia, Chris from the UK, Super Batman from Denmark, Emma from Leicestershire. Did I say that right? Leicester, Leicestershire, Leicestershire, where's your Shire sauce? I got it. April from Dallas, Doha from Cologne, Steve from the UK. Chris is inside of me, oh God. <laughs> Robin from Australia, the official gamer man from Antarctica. Build a snowman for me. Do you want to build a snowman? Luke from Australia. Kara from Illinois. Kate from Russia. Brian from Kansas. Dan from the Netherlands. NRTCBC from Liverpool. Love from Germany. Jenna from Sweden. Michael from Denmark. Amanda from New Zealand. Kara from Illinois. Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate you. Def Jeff from Cali. Robin, thanks for the super chat. Khan from Rhode Island. Blotten from Norway. I love that. Long live the Vikings. Rebella from Texas. Sarah from Leeds. Thank you so much, guys. LKC from Indiana. Shout out to my mod. Shout out to you guys. Really appreciate you. Listen, I'm going to sign this off the way I always sign it off. Life sucks. Life will kick you when you're down. Just look at Ren. But no matter where you are and no matter what you're going through, just know something very important. As you can see by this chat, as you can see by this growing community, you are never, ever truly alone. Please know that there is always someone out there who can relate, who wants to help. So don't be afraid to go get it. Don't be too prideful. Never forget the things that truly matter in this world. We can all get caught up in this money game. We can all chase fame, fortune, but you can't take that with you in the end. The memories that you have with the loved ones who are you here. You can't put a price tag on that time. So cherish those who are here for you, whether it's family, whether it's friends, or other loved ones. Never forget the little but most important things in life and in this world. I love you guys. Stay safe. Stay positive. Take care of your hearts. Take care of your mentals. I'll catch you again. It's one only Knox Hill, and I'm out.